depraved and adulterous is back. Let's talk about open relationships. Now, there's a guy I, I read a couple of books from. His name is Caleb Jones. He really subscribes to the Alpha Male 2.0 dynamic. Uh, I'm going to just read from a Reddit user on the Reddit site X Red Pill. And he writes that Caleb Jones makes somewhat red pill content, but he's different in some aspects. For example, most of his videos tell you how you can grow your business, make more money and stuff like that. His dating stuff is pretty much the same as other red pillars, but he is very one of few who support polyamorous relationships and that monogamous relationships are for betas and idiots. He also thinks hypergamy only affects monogamous relationships and not polyamorous ones. Which is an interesting way on looking at that. And so when I remember reading his book about Alpha Male 2.0, I listened to it on auto. And I heard that part of like, if you want to keep a woman happy in a relationship, then keep it open. And, you know, I listened to what he said. And, you know, I can also, also I can justify why he would say it. Because of the fact that we're getting to a point now with women because they know they have the options of where they can go like in terms of if they don't want to be in a, stuck in a marriage or you know there's been women that you know when they want to date if they're not necessarily completely feeling like you're going to satisfy all their needs because some women can feel like they can have some over-the-top ridiculous standards that they have and there are some guys that are willing to compromise with being in an open relationship i'll give you this for an example and so there was a girl that I talked to off and on for about six years, okay? I met her when she was 19 and then kept talking to her. The real, most recently, she was 25 years old. And this is like only a few weeks ago that I, I actually still talked with her. It was on Facebook. And so what happened was she had talked about that she, you know, she already had a lot of things, I guess, when it comes to self-esteem and self-confidence when I first met her. And then, for whatever reason, she never really, I never really asked about it. I didn't try to dig deep into it, but she decided not to go ahead and go forward with any guys like me, because I was interested in her as a friend with benefits, because even I knew I'm not trying to hold this woman down. I'm just trying to enjoy myself. At the time, six years ago, yeah, I wasn't looking for anything serious, because I didn't think I would find anyone that was worth being serious for. And so when I went uh, pursuing younger women, you know, like her. Again, I was in my late thirties and she was 19. I figured, let me just see. Like I, you know, I met her at a football game and I got her number. We talked and then I just worked on it. And I remember I saw her a couple of times and then I went ahead and got her number. We connected and I tried to work on it. It's like, she wasn't going to really, I don't know if she was interested or not, or she was just kind of enjoying the validation, which I didn't understand at the time if that was the case. Nevertheless, that's what it was. The other thing, too, is that when she talked about sex with me, she wasn't afraid to say that she was really open to a lot of different things. But like many women, she liked the guy to go down on her. Because, and she's a, you know, not a skinny girl, but like I know with some girls that I've met that have uh, been heavier, when they don't have to go and do all the extra work, they want a guy just to go and eat them out. Just saying it like that. And that with her, she basically says that right now, she still fools around with a girl that is a friend with friends with benefits to where she knows that this girl will go down on her and take care of her and set and, and service her as she wants. But then she also wants the component of possibly having a male in a relationship, something different, something trying something different, she said. And this is exactly the same idea of the story I want to take from psychology today. When a romantic partner asks for an open relationship, Wendy Patrick, who doesn't call him why bad looks good, she talks about behavioral and psychological predictors of attitudes towards consensual non-monogamy. But then she also talks about sociosexuality. It's measured in terms of attitudes, desires, and behaviors within non-committed relationships. And you could spot a high sociosexuality suitor the relationship history and attitudes about commitment, which is what I learned from this girl without giving up any information about her, but that's exactly what she wants. Now, 
she hit me back, and this is the thing. I pursued her. This is back, what, 2016, 2015, 2016. And then we had a falling out. And then she hit me back up, and it was one of those, like, how are you doing? And we started talking again. Nothing ever came of it. Like, like a day of conversation, and it just dropped off. And then nothing during the pandemic. And what I learned from her, because she decided to reach out to me again, twice this year, once in March, and once a few weeks ago, here towards the end of the summer. I'm like, okay. And her thing was, it didn't get really give me an explanation what she was reaching out to me for. So, I mean, I wasn't going to try to push on it until I talked to her for about like a week. And I felt like I was the one that initiated the conversation. And like, she only responded back when I wrote to her. So I already knew that's more than enough for me in texting that like, okay. And really it was a lot of short, maybe like, four to ten word answers so it was never like she took a lot of time to write back to me and compared to what i was writing to her trying to be communicating she didn't want to do the same thing back so that obviously gave me those same red flags i got before now she has got she's matured since then and with her saying she was saying well now i'm you know I'm much more independent because she had moved out of her parents house and she had been on her own and working on business, and she's making a living for herself, and she felt like, you know, now she's feeling that she's got somewhere in life that she wanted to be with, and it's one of those things where some modern women feel like, because of what I have, and my confidence, and my status, and the fact I have money in my pocket, I have things that I can buy, and I don't need a man to buy me anything, then that should be enough for a man to want me when it's not. No matter if I found her attractive, it's still not a good thing, because it's like, well, that's not the reason we're here together. Like, I like you because I'm attracted to you. And if you don't feel the same way about me, and she couldn't tell me, because everything's behind text. Everything's behind a DM. So I'm like, no, that's not working. But it's like, okay, I finally reached out. I didn't say anything in March when she talked to me. It was just like she reached out, and then I was dropped off. Again, ghosted. And then she reached out again. And I said, are we going to do something here? I mean, what are we doing? And then she finally wants to try something. And so we talk, but it's like the same result again. So I'm not here to figure out why she's doing it, but I know that she is most likely sociosexual, as Wendy Patrick is right here. So here's what she writes. Now, in the throes of a new romance, the exciting journey of developing a deeper relationship can come to a streaking halt. With a partner's comment over candlelight during dinner, I think we should see other people. But it's usually not so much where we should see other people. There are times the polyamorous relationships are, we want to bring somebody else into the bedroom. I'm like, I want to, you know, let's go find somebody else we can bring into the bedroom. So if it's a guy and gal, some girls absolutely will try to get another guy in bed. And, the, and, they're, and honestly, it's like kind of a diss in the face if you're not homosexual or you're not bisexual to where a woman will say, hey, I want to bring another guy in and let him fuck me and you can watch or you can be a part. And I'm like, two guys with one girl. Well, I would not never subscribe to that. That's not me. I'm, I'm a heterosexual. Sure, there are men that might do that, I guess, if they're bisexual or they're homosexual, I guess. But, you know, I feel like there's got to be something where it's going to be where the woman's going to try to get the most out of this relationship, especially an open relationship. I believe so. So, that you should look at the signs of those who are not in order to avoid wasting time. And you should find someone who's comfortable in a relationship but looking for more. Now, they referred to a, a researcher that examined the behavior and psychological predictors of attitudes towards this consensual non-monogamy, uh, which is called extradiatic sexual or romantic relationships. And it's usually moderated by avoided attachment, Described as being too much need for independence, fear of intimacy, and disclination to self-disclose. If you want to know about attachment theory, avoidant attachment is one of the traits of attachment theory. And it's one of those things where, like, you're trying to keep someone at arm's length, and then you also want to have other people in. It's almost like a safety measure to have somebody else in the bedroom with you because that's kind of a trust factor. And so, or there's something where if there's somebody else in the bedroom, then the satisfaction sexually will be from everyone and not focused on one person trying to service the other. That's the idea. 
sociosexuality predicts non-exclusivity, and that a higher level of unrestricted sociosexual behavior produced positive attitudes towards this non-monogamy. And researchers found that men report significantly highly higher unrestricted social sexual attitudes and behavior. Yet we know that women hold such attitudes as well. So they're saying that guys will want to have the threesome, or they're going to want to have other women they can go and spend time with. I don't think it normally goes that route. I think that guys would normally not try to disclose that and be open about it unless they're swingers. Like, I mean, I used to know a couple that they were married and they would go to the bar and we would go to this karaoke bar, all of us hung out in the same spot. And they always had a thing where they would always pick up some girl so that the guy and girl both enjoyed it. But for more than not, the woman got the most out of the enjoyment. The wife would get the most pleasure out of that. But the guy would then be able to get involved, first of all, watch from afar, be a spectator, and they get to participate after the fact, which was the way he got to go in. So that's what they way really enjoyed it. As far as I know, they still keep doing that. And it's worked for them. So even without knowing anyone's attachment style, one might observe signs of unrestricted social sexuality, whether through knowing the details of knowing someone's relationship, relational history or listening to their ideas and opinions on current events and issues involving sexual behavior or infidelity. There are signs of sexual attitudes and inclinations. So something about when I was talking to her this last time around, we talked sexually. And the thing is this, at 19 years old, I got to have one time I got to spend night well, spend with her, one night stand, and that's all I got to work off of. And that wasn't a, I mean, the experience was fine, but like it was, you know, she wasn't mature. She showed up two hours late, and for me to go through all the the business of getting things put together and planning, I was like, okay, you know, I just didn't feel like I did. I need to benefit by having all that, the tardiness, and kind of already starting off on a bad foot to try to go ahead and, you know, work my way through to enjoy the night with her. And that wasn't good. And it's not, I, listen, she's gone through something, I guess, that, that I'll never know as to why she feels the way she does about this. And that's fine, but it's unfortunate. And that's just the way it works here. So you might encounter somebody that goes through and wants an open relationship with you. It's becoming more often than not, because there are people out there, like I said, with Black Dragon, or Caleb Jones, he goes by Black Dragon, as that's his uh, screen name. There are people that, in dating circles or books or materials, they'll try to encourage polyamorous relationships because they think that's the way the things should go now, that monogamous doesn't work. And that's according to him. I don't know about that, but, you know, if you have somebody that goes through that, it's it's got to be something mutual, if any way possible. Unless you don't mind it, but I wouldn't do it. But if you do it, hey, have fun. And just remember that all of you in this menage a trois are all depraved and debaucherous.